of KT and Friday briefing come guys meet Wendy this she's just nine years old and she can do those crazy stunts Wendy nine years old yeah. you, you don't get scared that they can throw you off um, we pra we used to practice uh -huh. in, NC in NCCK uh -huh. so when we practice uh -huh. I just hold the mic for, yeah just hold the mic yeah like when a reporter uh -huh. when we practice uh -huh. I uh, I, then the group. Uh -huh. <laughs> you practice a lot, and you know the group always supports you, yeah. and they make sure that you don't fall at any point, right? Yeah. All right, I'm so excited to have you in studio. Are you excited to be here? Yeah. Will you do for us some more stunts? Yeah. All right. So good evening and welcome to this edition of KTN. I can I can have this now. All right, of KTN Friday Briefing. My name is Betty Kialo. Thank you very much for joining us tonight as we wind off a crazy, crazy and hectic week. Well, tonight we have comprehensive coverage of the day's events and we also have the group Pamoja Acro Dancers with the lovely lady, Wendy Waini. They will be our guest anchors tonight showing us a thing or two about, you know, acrobatics. Well, we have a lot coming up. Remember also that Willis the Word Master will be coming on a little bit later on the show. But let's first start with the highlights. Kisumu and Siaya counties receive Fidel Odinga ahead of tomorrow's burial. Our hands are clean. ICC prosecutor's office denies involvement with alleged witness Meshak Yabe. We say no. Let us be objective and be them with the best practices in the world. No pay rise just yet. Kaimenyi insists as court refuses to declare teacher strike illegal. And the world stands still as France hunts down gunmen who killed 12. Good evening and welcome. Our sign language interpreter is William Silla. Well, it has been a busy day in Bondo, Siaya County, following the arrival of the late Fidel Odinga's body. Leaders were joined by hundreds of mourners who turned up to receive the body. Well, we now cross over live to Bondo, where our reporter Victor Ogale has been following the proceedings there. Victor, a very good evening to you. Maybe you can take us through the day's events. Well, a very good evening to you, Betty Charlo from Mombasa Road. Indeed, we are coming to you live here in Siaya County in Bondo, here in Opoda Farm, which is Rilo Dinga's farm, father to the late Fidel Castro Macario Zodinga. Indeed, what you can see behind me is the viewing of Fidel's body, and uh, this ceremony has been continuing till late, from late in the afternoon till now. As you can see, mourners are still coming in and viewing the late Fidel's body. Initially, there was supposed to be a public viewing at the Jomo Kenyatta grounds soon after the body arrived at the K Kisumu International Airport, but that did not go on as planned. Due to the number of crowds that turned out at the Jomo Kenyatta grounds in Kisumu, the heart of Kisumu City, rendering the exercise 
not possible to go on. And uh, also on my right, as you can see, or rather here, uh, those are mourners who are singing songs in praise of Fidel. And uh, already they are close to a thousand mourners who are here at the Royal Odinga's home, you know, Poda Farm. And it is believed they are going to stay here till, till Saturday morning. And uh, tomorrow morning on Saturday, uh, the procession is going to head at the Bondo University where the burial ceremony is going to be held. And uh, after the burial ceremony is over in the afternoon, the procession will then again head to Fidel's grandfather's home. And uh, just to put you in the know, Fidel's grandfather is the late Jaramogi Yogigo Dinga. And uh, that's where Fidel will be buried at his grandfather's home. And they did, uh, there is a lot of pushing and shoving here. And uh, I don't know if you can clearly see the pictures behind me of the public viewing. And um, the body arrived at Kisumu City at 9 a.m. Uh, before coming to the Kisumu grounds. And it will be remembered that Fidel Odinga passed on last Sunday on the 4th of January uh, while in his sleep. And... Uh, Yesterday, during the service of Fidel Odinga, this was a man who was eulogized by the who's who in the country, including the president and the deputy president. And it is a, a funeral that brought together the leaders who, from all the political divides, from all the tribal lines. And for, for the first time in the country, of, in Kenya, we saw all our political leaders uniting in, in, in one harmony and preaching peace and preaching unity. And from me here, and uh, the crowd is starting to be so loud from here in Bondo, from Opoda Farm, uh, it is goodbye and a very, and a good night. And back to you, Betty Chalo in studio. Right, thank you very much. Our Victor Gale there reporting live from Bondo. We'll have more details of tomorrow's uh, burial ceremony in our subsequent bulletins. That's tomorrow. Well, moving on, ICC Chief Prosecutor Fatou Ben Souda has dismissed as outrageous and utterly false speculation by Jubilee MPs over the abduction and murder of alleged witness Meshak Yebe. Leaders led by National Assembly Majority Leader Aidan Dwale on Wednesday demanded answers as to why the prosecution had allegedly been involved with Yebe, whom Deputy President William Ruto maintains was his defense witness. But as KTN's associate editor Noah Otieno reports, Ben Suda has categorically stated that they contacted but later dropped Yebe as a potential witness after discovering Yebe was involved corrupting witnesses in the Ruto San case. ICC Prosecutor Fatou Bensouda's office has moved quickly to respond to the tough statement released by the National Assembly Majority Leader Adan Duale and his Jubilee colleagues on Wednesday regarding the man Meshak Yebe. Meshak Yebe was a witness of the defense. How come the prosecution through Ken Wafula got access in its dealings to a defense witness, one Meshak Yebe. Ben Suda has dismissed Duale's speculation, saying any suggestion that the office of the prosecutor was involved in Yebe's alleged abduction and murder is both outrageous and utterly false, and that nothing could be further from the truth. Just two days after four top Kenyan detectives began the investigations into Yebe's murder, Ben Suda has sought to clarify that Meshak Yebe was contacted alongside many other potential witnesses during the investigations into the ICC case against William Ruto and radio journalist Joshua Sang. But Ben Suda insists that Yebe was ultimately dropped because, according to Ben Suda's office, Yebe was implicated in attempts to corrupt prosecution witnesses. But Jubilee is also turning the heat on activist Ken Wafula. On what grounds are they collaborating with the defense witness? To what extent has the OTP interfered with the defense in this manner? There was an attempt by the defense uh, to bribe Meshak from being a witness, a prosecution witness at the ICC. Bensuda in her statement today says her case against Ruto and Sang has seen massive attempts to interfere with prosecution witnesses through bribery and threats to discourage or force them to withdraw their testimonies. There have been many twists in the story of Meshak Yebe's murder. Despite Jubilee's insistence that he was a defense witness, 
His family is still not so sure. It was still mere suspicion, but uh, Meshach had not formally informed us that he was an ICC witness. So I cannot allege or I cannot confirm that fact. Neither can I deny the same because most of his friends seem to be um, indicating that he must have had some association with the ICC cases going on at The Hague. Yebe's murder is still under investigation. Now, Tino Katie and Friday Briefing. Justice Ndumba Ndari of the Industrial Court has refused to declare the ongoing teachers' strike as illegal. The Industrial Court judge has, however, given the two teachers' unions seven days to present their case before him. The Teachers' Service Commission had earlier this week filed a petition to have the court declare the teachers' strike as illegal to justify withholding pay for those who have boycotted classes since the 5th of January. KTN's Catherine Omwanto has more. The ruling by the industrial court is said to have been made so as not to worsen the ongoing impasse between two teachers' unions and the government. The court has instead given officials of the Kenya National Union of Teachers and the Kenya Union of Post-Primary Education Teachers seven days to tell their side of the story through Davids. The question now is, will this improve the situation or will it remain the same? Because the Cabinet Secretary for Education, Professor Jacob Kaimeni, insists that there is no money to give no matter how much union leaders dig in their heels. All these, these allowances and their salaries, they demanded the cost of $726 billion. That is, we are saying about $0.7 trillion which is more or less really like last year's national budget, in all fairness. Again, where will that money come from? What you are offering in terms of, because what we offered, for example, leave allowance, which was not there before. If you look at the cost of all this, it translates into 9.3 billion. This money was not factored into this year's budget. And therefore, or if you got to be pragmatic, you would expect that we shall address this problem in next year's budget. The 9 billion shilling package includes harmonized house allowance, hardship allowance, travel allowance, car loans for at least 800,000 shillings for the lowest paid teacher, a mortgage scheme at 3% interest, a medical scheme to be incorporated by the National Hospitals Insurance Fund, and leave allowance despite the fact that teachers ideally should not be working during school holidays after out of school tuition was banned. According to Kaimeni, the government has met most of the union's demands. The only contentious issue is the basic salary increment. You know, the NAT has been insisting a CBA must have a salary component. That is not true. A CBA can be negotiated even for one item, and it is a CBA. So again, we decided we shall treat them like other public servants. And you, you hear me insisting all the time, public servants. Eh? <laughs> there has been this, this thinking that uh, teachers are not public servants. They are. You are prepared to respect the mandate of TSC, who is the employer. But you are saying SRC has no business. Yet, constitutionally, it is a mode mandated to determine whether what you are requesting, in comparison with others, one, is it in harmony? Two, is it sustainable? There are those who say that the teachers have gotten a raw deal. When state officers demand for a salary or allowance increment, it is implemented almost immediately. However, when it comes to teachers, the government plays this endless game of tug of war. So that you appreciate this. Because sometimes we give an impression that the government has not been proactive Yet, we've been very proactive. In 2007, the salary, the salary of a principal, a, a chief principal of a secondary school was roughly that, the, that five for that 6,000 shillings. Today, the minimum salary is one over 109,000. That's an increase of 83%. 
Five days of empty classrooms is making everyone edgy, including members of parliament. Whereas the government is still having its position that it's not, not having enough money, the unions needs to be humane, needs to be considerate in negotiations and demands. Since this is our country, and we should not actually be a striking nation. Over the years, we've been basically sub, uh, subjective. People make noise, we increase salaries. But this time around, we are saying, no, let us be objective and be in tandem with the best practices in the world. Yeah? And therefore, what we intend to do is to do that job evaluation in the next, hopefully in the next 80 months. And once that is done, then the teachers of this country and other public servants will be considered. As of the 5th of January, students and pupils of public schools have not been attending school, yet students and pupils of private schools have, putting those at public schools at a great disadvantage, especially if this impasse continues. Now it's up to the government and the unions to think beyond themselves and about those in public schools. Catherine Omwando, KTN, Nairobi. Right, so we've had both sides of the divide, the teachers and the government. So tonight, no, a big question. We are asking you, what's your comment on that standoff between teachers and the government? What is your comment or what are your thoughts on the standoff between teachers and the government? The number is 22155. But you can tweet me with the hashtag Friday Briefing or at Betty Callow and we'll be sampling your views as we move along. Mm -hmm. Let's now cross over to news making headlines in our country. At least eight buildings under construction in Nairobi have today been identified as illegal. The National Construction Authority said the developers failed to comply with the required procedures. An inspection launched by the authority is set to go on in Nairobi and its environs for the next one month. Ian Wafula has the details. As the axe fell on a number of buildings under construction in Nairobi's Gidurai area, some of the masons hid behind unfinished walls, not too sure what outcome to expect, while the developers were untraceable except via their mobile phones. We are leaving for you a, 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 a closer notice, huh? and uh, you will you, comply. The collapse of two buildings in Huruma and Makongeni in a span of three weeks revealed loopholes in the housing sector in the county, with developers failing to follow due process. In Huruma, for instance, the building had been approved for four stories, while its developer opted to go three floors higher. This prompting the National Construction Authority to act swiftly. Do we have a registered contractor by National Construction Authority? Do we have uh, relevant uh, drawings that are approved by various agencies, the ones in, under construction. Do we have a signboard that is showing the various professionals, the architects, the, 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 the structural engineers involved in the project? We need that board to see that body so that the, those professionals, we can hold them accountable. Tenants, on the other hand, have been accused of moving into buildings under construction without demanding for a certificate of occupation, which states whether a building is fit for occupation or not. But the authority maintains that the buck stops with building owners and developers. We are giving the, the developer notice that uh, he has to comply with the various items that he's deficient in. And so we are also coping to the DPP for prosecution, so that it's the DPP who does the prosecution. A number of buildings may soon face demolition. That is once an audit report by a multi-agency task force set up by both the national and county government is released. This in an effort to address the loss of lives from poor planning and illegal constructions. Meanwhile, a court has detained for 14 days a county officer, Jane Wanjiko, who is accused of approving the construction of the Huruma flat that led to the death of five people as police compile murder charges against her. At least 12 people died and scores of others injured from both Huruma and Makongeni incidences. Ian Wafula, KTN. 
For the sixth day now, tension remains high along the Kisi Transmara border following the shooting to death of a trader by police who were dispersing a group of armed Maasai and Kisi men. Fred Muturi has the latest. The incident occurred yesterday evening at the border of Kiango and Shangoi when the two warring sides orchestrated revenge attacks. The police responded quickly to try and disperse the people and act as a buffer between them. A trader said to have been fleeing the volatile area was killed by a stray bullet. According to an eyewitness, 36 year old Richard Okari was with a friend and he had just closed his shop when the police fired towards them. A bullet hit Okari in the back. In that process, Villa Turitoka Inje, Tumeanza Kutoroka Kwenda Chini, Ule Jamaka, Pigari Sasimoja. Tena kapiga nyingine. Mimi nikawana uja mana tupiga. Nikawacha ule mwenzangu nikaingia kwa koldo yenye ilikuwa pale. So ndi aliweza kumpiga risazi kutoka nyuma, haka anguka chini. Bullets tore through Kiango shopping center during what the witness described as a chaotic shooting. Na sasa wakati nimekuja mimi mwenyewe na jama mwingine tumebeba ule jamaa tunataku mweka kwa pikipiki yenye ilikuwa hapo. Tumpeleka hospitali. Tena ule askari ya kaja pale mbele yetu. Tena haka piga marisasi. Kanza kupiga. Kabidi tuangushe pikipiki na ule mwili pale. Tena tuwakwa, pia sisi tutorokea usalama wetu. Many people have fled from their houses as business remains at a standstill. Some sugarcane farmers were harvesting their torched sugarcane under heavy security. Pira watu wameteseka, nyumba simechomwa, watu wameumia, wengine wameama, wametorokea makwao. Sasa, ukweli wa mambo, sisi kama wakaji wa haba, tumeomba tu amani. Hundreds of people gathered to protest the killing of the businessman, but the police believe the shooting was an accident. We were trying to scare the crowd because some the Maasai were coming with the arrows, the kids were coming with the arrows, so we were to contain the situation. I was scared to go to I was scared to go to the house. I was scared to go to the house. I was scared to People are still hanging around the border, still armed with bows, arrows, machetes and spears as tension remains high. Even public service vehicles cannot ply this route since the incident has created fear and animosity. Efforts by the national government to unite the two communities twice has hit a snag. The death of Okari has stirred emotions here, but the police are asking members of the public not to pass judgment so quick, even though the bullet killed the businessman in a feud that he wasn't involved in. Fred Muturi, KTN, Shangoi, Transmara. Well, we take a short commercial break, but before we do, let's uh, have a reminder of our big question tonight. And we're asking you, what's your comment on the standoff between teachers and the government over pay? What's your comment on the standoff between the teachers and the government over the pay? I'm seeing quite a number of messages coming in. Let me sample one or two. Paul Mwani says, teachers to accept to sign performance contracts first before they demand a pay rise. We as parents want good grades. Uh, but Ambuli Victor has a different opinion and says to pay teachers sufficiently the government should look at it progressively. Gerald Njeru says both parties should sit and find a solution because it will have to come from the two sides. Thank you very much for your responses. Continue sending them in. The hashtag is Friday Briefing but you can text 22155. A big question is what's your comment on the standoff between teachers and the government? Well we take a short commercial break. Don't go away. When we come back we will have the little Miss Wendy Waini together with the Pamoja Acro Ak dancers and they have quite an amazing show to put up. Don't go away, stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to KTM Friday Briefing. Thank you very much for staying with us. Well, it's that time for the guest anchor segment. But before that, let's get a little bit of uh, acrobatics in studio uh, from the Pamoja Acro Dancers. And they'll ask the director to up the music a little bit because they want to feel it. All right, guys, over to you. Take it away. <laughs> Wendy? <laughs>
the music i'm sure they would have gone on and on and on okay how do you do that <laughs> oh my okay when do you want to do something <laughs> wow wow guys come, come on come on come on wow you guys are amazing wendy let me just get your mic um wow that was quite an amazing show i'll ask the director to just you know give that music give us that music a little bit but let me you know engage my little friend here all right, just come here. All right, so Wendy, ulianza hii kudance ku gani? Ilianza ikiwa for years. Uh -huh. And um Lily usku wenye alikuwa anafanya hiyo acrobatic, uh -huh. walikuwa wananiambia nifanye hii step. Uh -huh. Nikifanya, uh -huh. wananiangalia nisianguke. Uh -huh. Na uogopi mi yeah. akisiezi rushwa hiyo alafu niache tu hivyo. Mimi nitakuwa ningekuwa nime give up kitambo. Hauogopi? Una, una, una practice sana. Na ulianza ukikuwa how old? Four years. Four years? Yeah. Ukiwa mdogo hivyo, na sasa yeah. uko nine years. Yeah. Na ni kitu unataka kufanya ukiendelea hivyo, ukipaka kwe mkubwa? Eh, yeah, but uh -huh. ni, ni kwa mkubwa, ni kwa uh -huh. job. Uh -huh. Unataka kukwa ni kwa mkubwa? Ni kwa mkubwa. Uh -huh. Neza ataka kwa doctor. Oh, doctor. Yo ni yeah. poa. Yo ni poa. Si, si journalist kama mimi. Uweza kufanya job yangu? Naweza penda. Unaweza penda? Na sasa niulize shule watu wanasema nini wakiona eh ule ni ule Wendy ana ule ule acrobat. Wanasema nini? Sa zingine kwa shule. Sa zingine unajua na poanga cheo kubwa kwa shule. Eh eh lazima. Kama unaweza dance unaweza fanya hivyo, unaweza fanya hizo stunts lazima. Aha. Na na pochwa kubwa na simamishwa hapo kwa parade naongea na sema venye shule maendelea hiyo na parents wako wanasema wanapenda ukidance hivi ulifanya nini ukawa convince ukamwambia mami dadi nataka kudance wakakubali wali ulifanya nini wakakubali nilianza tu ku split kwa nyumba yani unaweza split hebu split nione acha nikushike hiyo hata mama unaweza rush split nayo I wish I could do that. Wow. No nakatwi uski uchungu mali. Uko sawa? Okay, sawa. Kuja. Sasa hata au kikurusha hivyo juu uski ni kama unaweza anguka uogope. I do. Me shot train. Eh me shot train. Siku hiyo kwa mkubwa tukakuwa daktari. That's nice. So, lakini leo tunaweza fanya ile kitu mwina umekana nikifanya pale kusoma story. Unaweza introduce? Hebu kuja tuone. Come. Come tukuje kwa hii kamera hapa. Leo tutasimama mama tutaka sabweni hapo ah ama tena jo une za ruka okay there we go sawa last year kesi ah, ngoja okay so utaanza uji introduce wewe ni nani alafu uende sawa okay uh, my name is Wendy Waeni and um i use i am have <laughs> learned to um i'm learning to do news news <laughs> okay Last year, KCP examination result may have lacked the traditional drama due to the ban on racking of schools and in indivi indi individuals. individuals, but in the slums of Ch Changam Changamwe. Changamwe, the story of 14-year-old million Mi Milton o Omondi is one that continues to be celebrated milton to is the son of a single mother three who def defied an environment 
of of Nier. nearly round the clock nazi co consumption 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 to to score score for four hundred and twenty three out of five hundred marks in KCP here here's the story the story of Milton begins here in the slums of Jitoni, Changamwe. <laughs> Customers converge in their numbers to catch a sip of the popular Mnazi drink. The Halibali exhibited, giving you a feel of what you will precisely call a typical day in the life of this homestead. A daily menu that Milton has had to grapple with since he was a small child. Selling Mnazi is what this family depends on for survival. Indeed, teething challenges that he has scaled to write his inspirational story. Hapo is a cow kiuza, tembo, madam tuta mingi ataka kufanya homework. Where's the fukuza customer and talalanja? It a bidding much a villa villa like a little saki. Napon upon one akunya tembo, hapo pia pana matusi. Lakini ile senti kidogu na taka. It a bidding of mili maisha. Wevon me pitya shida, shida, paka kirigeshu upa nyumbani, nasi shindu a villain tamfanya. In this poorly lit house, Milton will still find space to peruse through his books. He digs into his books as a reminder of the journey uphill. He managed 423 marks out of the possible 500 to become one of Changamwe's and indeed one of Kenya's top candidates in last year's examinations. And as they say, success brings associations. Today, the lovers of the sip were here too in solidarity. Their presence, they say, is to extend the rare magnanimity to the Omondis. Sister Kama wa Levi, tumesikia furu hata, mime likuwa nakunyo mahali pengina, kene miwona, afadhali niwe ni kija ni kikunyo hapa, ili kusudi umu toto, ndoto yake, katika maisha yake, ikamilike. Back at the Edward King's Academy where Milton schooled, the drum beats of his success continues to be celebrated. And when he makes a comeback, he's embraced like a king. We first joined this school when we started the school in 2008. When he came, he was a hard-working boy. I know the mother to be somebody who is living in the slums around this place. And uh, because of his hard working, we had, to keep him, him, we had to keep him in school so that he can achieve whatever is the, the future old for him. And as Milton returns back home to prepare for the next challenge, in him reverberates the powerful message that with a strong will, one can soar great heights. The challenges are there, but you should not have much time looking at them. For example, your background where you are, you should just look, be straightforward in education and will achieve whatever you, you have set. It is quite unbelievable of how Milton could still shape his dream from the shackles of this homestead. But the biggest challenge now remains on how he'll now proceed to the next level. Francis Ontomwa, KTN, Jitonyi Village, Jomvu. Thank you, Francis, for that. Well, we are back. I mean, she has done so well. I will give you a 10 out of 10. That was amazing. And that intro was quite long. You can do it. I also think you can do it. So watching Kulize, I've seen some pictures and our viewers will get to see them. You only meet President Uhuru Kenyatta? Yeah. How ilikuwaje mpaka mka kuja mka meet? Um, Uhuru Kenyatta alipigia simu. Aha. Uh -huh. Aka tumana. Mhm. Uh -huh. Tenduko state house. Mhm. Uh -huh. Sasa venye tulenda state house, tuka mpafumia. Aha. Uh -huh. Alifrai sana. Aha. Uh -huh. Na pia bado, nika meet President Wengine. Wengine, aha. Uh -huh. Na... President Paul Kagame. Wow. Uh -huh. Ame ni invite uko kwa country yake. Uh -huh. Wow, wendu uka perform uko? Eh. Wow. Ulif, ulifilaji, ni nini alikuwa nga nakuambia? Sabo picha ingini hapo ni mwana ni kama nakuambia kitu kwa masikio. Ni nini alikuwa nga nakuambia? <laughs> ni secret yangu. Oh, ni secret yako na yeye. Eh. Na how was it kuperform bele au presidents? Watu unajua watu wangapi? Hata mimi, mi hata mia zataka kumi. Tata Margaret Kenyatta. Alikuwa manini Margaret Kenyatta first lady? Aliambia... That's good. Uh -huh. And continue uh -huh. to improve that. Uh -huh. And yeah, that is good. So because we may meet President Huru Kenyatta, President Paul Kagame, First Lady, Ninani Munginun is at Kakumit. 
Mimi naweza taka kumit. Aha. Naweza taka tukusonga kwa country to country. Aha. Different countries in Africa in the world ukiperform. Ni country gani sana unaweza taka kwenda? Yenye naweza taka kwenda sana. Aha. Naweza taka tu kwenda kumit Paul Kagame. Oh Paul Kagame. Rwanda. Wow, amazing. All right. So, thank you so much Wendy. We'll see if we get some more time she'll be able to perform a little bit later on in the bulletin. But for now, to play a short commercial break. Ni camera. Uh-huh. Can you see? break. Let's go to break. Time for business. 2014 was marked by growth of the Nairobi Securities Exchange as investors continued to pump money into the stocks market. Investors in 2014 made a cool 11 billion shillings from bonus shares. We now take you through the performance of the NSC throughout the year and what to expect in 2015. Charles Kitonga breaks down the numbers for us. The trend at the Nairobi Securities Exchange has been that of year-on-year -year growth, a clear indication that it was a good year for investors. Statistics from the boss indicate that market capitalization grew to 2.3 trillion shillings in 2014, up from 1.92 trillion shillings registered in the previous year. Equity turnover rose by 38.51% to 215 billion shillings from 155 billion shillings posted in 2013. This was driven by increased annual trading volumes, which rose by 6.1% to 8.1 billion shares, up from 7.6 billion. The overall market performance in the year 2014, as measured by the benchmark NSE 20 share index, rose by 3.77% to close at 51.12.65 points, up from a low of 49.26.97 points posted at the close of 2013. However, the broader all share index shed 0.36 points to close the year at 162.89, an indication that the larger companies continue to exact their dominance in the market. Generally, also trading in the market has been improving over the last two years. So generally, I would say yes, a good year. On the top gainers list, Kenya Orchards posted a significant 3,566% gain, though on thin volumes of 48,300 shares, to close the year at 110 shillings, having started at only 3 shillings. Unga Group, Britam, Kakuzi and Centum Investments also made it to the list of the top five gainers. The challenge of looking at Kenya orchards is that the volumes weren't much. In fact, every day it was just gaining by 100 shares. So very marginal in, on very little volume. Centrum particularly was coming from, from a low base and investors were really pleased at some of the projects they, they, they undertook. And, and this pushed investors to place a lot more optimism directly through the stock market in terms of the share price. On the loser's table, Kabasid investments lead by 57%, making it the top loser for the year. Also ending the year in the red was Uchumi Supermarkets, Mumias Sugar, Kenya Airways and Bamboo Cement. Mumias and KQ have had a tough run as the year was marred with loss after loss. Aviation generally is a challenging industry and the big loss that the airline experienced, uh, you know, with investors expecting that maybe at some point the, the airline will start turning around was clearly a disappointment. If you look at Uchumi supermarkets, uh, there was the rights issue coming through and there was a lot of uncertainty as to whether the amount that they were seeking was actually sufficient. As losers lost and gainers gained, there are events that shaped the market in 2014. Separation of ownership of the stock exchange from brokers through demutualization paved way for self-listing in July of last year. The NSE stock registered a growth of 115% in five months to close the year at 20 shillings and 50 cents from the listing price of 9 shillings and 50 cents. Demutualizing the exchange now paves the way for introduction of more investment vehicles. What you're going to see now is more products. You know, the derivatives, probably commodity trading. 2014 also ended the listing drought in the market as a growth enterprise market gems welcomed three listings of Flame Tree Group, Kuruitu Ventures and Atlas Development and Support Services. Analysts now expect that 2015 will be a better trading year, though it has started on a low on fears of recently reintroduced capital gains tax. This year, analysts are placing a big bet on the listed oil marketers owing to the plummeting global oil prices, which are likely to give them larger profit margins. 
Companies in the energy sector are expected to issue large cash calls to finance their mega projects, while the manufacturers are likely to have a good year if production costs will come down. Other companies to watch are those in insurance, banking, and the ICT sectors. Charles Gitonga, KTN. Well, trading in shares has actually been described as a high-risk, high-return business. Well, that is definitely food for thought. Well, let's now have the financial markets review. Maustak. 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 Mostek, Mostek, Maustach, Maustach, Maustach. It's time for Mind Your Language, the segment in which we get to learn the different pronunciations of certain English words. Willis, how are you doing from Kisumu County? <laughs> Fine, thanks. And uh, how is Nairobi? Nairobi, we're doing great. You look great, ready for tonight's um, lesson. I can see you in red, meaning fire. <laughs> you know... A combination of fire, uh -huh. great, uh -huh. and cool plus tough in Nairobi, <laughs> you know what it means. I know what it means. Well, get, let's get straight to it, Willis. You've heard our dear Kenyans on the street saying mustache, 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 which is which, Willis? <laughs> well, this word is a bit tricky, but the correct or acceptable pronunciation, Betty, is mm -hmm. mustache. Mm -hmm. Mustache. Mm -hmm. So many people talk of mustache, mm -hmm. mustache, mm -hmm. mustache, and all that, but we say mustache. Okay. All right, Willis, got it. And what of this other word, mirage or mirage? Does it also affect in the same uh, way? What we don't say when we are talking of mirage mm -hmm. or mirage, mm -hmm. we don't say mirage uh -huh. the way many people mistake the word to be. Uh -huh. We say mirage with a primary stress at the onset or mm -hmm. second syllable. So you say mirage uh -huh. or mirage. All right, Willis, got it. Um, let's move on to our second word. Do we say requisition or requisition? Re. Right. The sound is a, eh, not mm -hmm. e. Mm -hmm. Requisition, mm -hmm. requisition. Mm -hmm. And this reminds me about also the word preparation, preparation. Mm -hmm. We don't talk of pre, preparation, no, mm -hmm. preparation. Mm -hmm. But the verb is prepare, to prepare. Uh -huh. All right, Willis, so it's prepare, but preparation. Yes. All right, let's move on yes. to our third word. Now, what do you call something that is characterized by strong emotion? Is it tempestuous, tempestuous, tempestuous? Which is which? <laughs> Don't laugh at me, Willis. I'll begin. <laughs> Don't worry, but I'll begin from a word that you've not asked me, but very much related to this in terms of the terminal part, the ending. Yes. Many people talk of Tamalta's welcome. We don't uh -huh. say tumultuous. Uh -huh. We say tumultuous. Tumultuous. Wow. <laughs> but this word which you have asked me about, Betty, we say 
tempestuous, uh -huh. tempestuous, okay. not tempestuous. Okay. No. All right. Okay, got it, Willis. Moving on now. Over the weekend, last week, I was listening to some English, uh, British comedy, and I had them talking about telephone. And I was wondering, do we say telephone, telephone, which is which? <laughs> I was quite confused. <laughs> You know, Betty, locally, when we see the spelling of a word, like now T-E-L-E, -E, yes. we'll rush into talking of tele, uh -huh. tele, uh -huh. just because of the spelling. Yes. But the correct pronunciation in that case is tele, telephone, uh -huh. just like yeah. teleprompter, when I'm talking about the auto cue, yes. teleprompter, uh -huh. but many people say teleprompter, telecast instead of telecast. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yes. Wow. Okay. So it's that's that's a, that's a, that should have been our surprise word. Telephone, teleprompter, telecast. I know. That is a nice one, Willis. Thank you. <laughs> Moving on to another word that uh, means you know a floating device in the sea. Do we say a boy? A boy. That is the pronounce the 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 b u o y. U is silent in that word. You mm -hmm. say boy just like B O Y. Mm -hmm. B U O Y, mm -hmm. boy. Mm -hmm. B O Y, boy. Words which have different spellings and meanings but mm -hmm. pronounced the same way, we call them homophones in matters of phonology or phonetics or if you like, mm -hmm. pronunciations. Okay, we will. Okay, got that one. So it's a boy. Okay, so what do you call the, the soldiers who fought on horsebacks? Do you say a cal calvary, um, calvary, which is which, Willis? We should get this on very clear, Betty. Mm -hmm. When we talk of a cavalry, mm -hmm. cavalry, mm -hmm. the part of the army that fights or uses armored vehicles in the modern mm -hmm. society or mm -hmm. in the past, they were using horses, yeah. we talk of cavalry, cavalry. Mm -hmm. But there is a place in the Bible. Yes which is also called Golgotha. Yes. That one we say Calvary, okay. Calvary. So okay. we talk of cavalry uh -huh. for the army, uh -huh. but the place we talk of Calvary. Okay, all right, Willis, got it. Let's move on to um, this word before we get to your surprise word. Do we say conjunction or is it conjunction? And is it same as conglomerate, <laughs> conglo con conglomeration? <laughs> Remember last week? So is it conjunction or is it conjunction? <laughs> what we don't have in that word is the sounding J as mm -hmm. a digraph. Mm -hmm. N and J don't combine to form the sound J like mm -hmm. in Kiswahili language. Mm -hmm. Here we talk of conjunction, conjunction, mm -hmm. not conjunction, mm -hmm. not conjunction, mm -hmm. and all that. Just mm -hmm. like we talk of an injunction, mm -hmm. injunction, injunction, not injunction, uh -huh. the junction, uh -huh. yes. Okay, we'll yes. All right, let's move on to your surprise word. Which is, which is it today? Well, you won't believe it. Mm -hmm. A lady at a market called Darajambili within the <laughs> outskirts of Kisi town asked me, mm -hmm. Willis, do we say parachute mm -hmm. when we are talking of the device that people use to land slowly or safely from a plane? Yeah. I remembered many people say <laughs> parachute. The way yes. the lady, she told me she's called Lucia, not Lucia. Uh. <laughs> anyway, Betty, yeah. the correct pronunciation of this word will be a surprise to many people. Mm -hmm. We say parachute mm. parachute mm -hmm. not parachute mm -hmm. shoot okay. not shoot all right yes that is my surprise word for tonight all right willis thank you for that so it's a parachute not parachute <laughs> all right <laughs> thank yes. you very much willis always a pleasure having you on the show for those pronunciation lessons thank you very much and it's always my pleasure to be mm -hmm. right here doing the needful in terms of the standard correct or mm -hmm. acceptable pronunciation of English words. You can only get him right here on Friday Briefing or on his Twitter handle at Willis Oching one
Welcome back. Well, after the Christmas and New Year's break, the Kenya Cup action returns this weekend with a host of matches. Strathmore Leers, who are on top of the Kenya Cup standing with a single bonus point advantage, will be all out against Mwamba RFC in one of the most anticipated matches. Moses Wahisi reports. <laughs> It has been six weeks of action in the current Kenyan Cup season, and as matters stand, the log leading pack has put in stellar performances and remain on course to make it for the playoffs. With 30 points, Pan African Strathmoleos lead the Kenyan Cup standings, having accumulated an impressive six bonus points from its outings. Defending champions Top Fry Nakuru and last season's runners up KCB have all won their six matches. But with only five bonus points, the Wanyores are placed second, with 29 points, one point ahead of that placed KCB. Mwamba RFC is placed fourth, but they had a rejuvenated performance that might certainly boost their chances of returning to the playoffs for the first time since the 2012-2013 season. An impressive Cabras Sugar has worked their way up to the fifth, with high hopes of being among the four semi-finalists at the close of the regular season. Saturday 10th, January 2015 is expected to be an action time when the league resumes. Lunch Queens will host Homeboys RFC. An impressive KCB will be up against 8th place total nodis at the KCB Sports Club. Two varsity sides clash when Catholic monks host Black Blood at Strathmore University, the same venue where Pan-African Strathmore's Lewis will bully off against Mwamba in a most anticipated tie. Two bottom clubs, Mombasa Sports Club and Mean Machine, will also clash on the same day. Top Rain Akuru, who are in a desperate need for bonus points, will be out squaring it out against Western Bulls at the Nakuru Athletics Club, while Kakamega High School will host Cabras Sugar against Resolution Impala. With the stakes being high, an entertaining and rib-cracking match day seven is in the offing. Moses Wahisi, KTN Sports. Senegal, Algeria, South Africa and Ghana will be all competing in Group C for only two qualifications ticket for the 2015 Orange Africa Cup of Nations quarterfinals. But termed as the group's underdog, Senegal, who missed the 2013 action, will be all out, spirited to replicate the, the 2002 World Cup performance. Moses Wahisi again puts that into perspective. It's a chance for France, and he's hit the post. The Senegal national football team, commonly referred to as the Lions of Teranga, made its first World Cup in 2002 and caused a huge upset by defeating the then world and European champions, France 1 0 in the tournament's opening game. And they've got two striding up in the center here. Booba Chop is there. Oh, and Booba Chop is there. And Senegal has scored the first goal of the 2002 World Cup. After half an hour's play, Papa Booba Chop. The side went ahead to reach the quarterfinals. Senegal has, however, not been consistent as they failed to qualify for the 2006, 2010 and 2014 World Cup finals. At the continent level, Senegal was the semi-finals of the Chan 2009, where they eventually lost 7-6 to Ghana in a penalty shootout. In the AFCON 2015 extravaganza, which might be a chance to redeem themselves. Teranga Lions are training hard to get ready to battle against Ghana, Algeria and South Africa in their group stage action. Obviously not an easy affair. But bullied by the likes of Western midfielder Shegu Kuyate, Sadio Mane of Southampton, Stoke City Mane Biram Diof, Newcastle Maestro Papi Sise, and Musa Konate who trades for FC Sion, the Lions of Teranga might be the group C's surprise package. At the 2002 World Cup, it was experience in charge, and the current crop of players are simply geared to sparkle in the Africa Cup of Nations and maybe get a chance to dance with the big guns at the 2018 World Cup in Russia. Moses Wahesi, KTN Sports. Mm -mm. Manchester City. All right. Let me just finish the sports. We'll come back, okay? Okay. 
Sorry for that. Manchester City midfielder Yaya Toure was named African Footballer of the Year for a record fourth consecutive time. The Ivory Coast International equaled the, tie, the tally of former Cameroon striker Samuel Eto'o but became the first player to win the title four times in a row. Toure beat off the challenge of Gabon striker Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang and Nigeria goalkeeper Vincent Nyama. He has nine goals in 26 appearances for City in all competitions so far this season, including six goals in his last nine outings. Toure also made the FIFA shortlist for the 2014 Ballon d'Or prize in October. The award voted on by African national team coaches and technical directors also saw Algeria win National Team of the Year, while Nigerian female youngster Asisat Os. Oshawala won the Youth Player of the Year and Female Player of the Year awards. Right, so we are just about to wind up uh, this edition of KTM Friday Briefing. As you can see, she's so enthusiastic. I think I think you should become a journalist because you're always here. I think unapenda isana, sendo. All right, so we'll be getting to Wendy in just a short while. But let me just sample one or two comments from our big question tonight. And if you can remember, we had asked you to comment on the standoff between teachers and the government over the pay. Let me sample one or two. Basil Shuiski says. Uh, the government should pay teachers their demands it's their right let's resolve this crisis uh, someone else uh, cedric said he says they should be paid it's their due since the 90s that's not been honored and peace pass their salary in just seconds why not teachers another one absconding duty isn't punishing the government but harming the students teachers should learn how to demand their increment um, someone else said called david sakwa says the government offer looks sweet but it can i doubt the uh, that it can be implemented give teachers their pay so many um comments coming in on our twitter handle on our sms thank you very much for you know taking time to you know text us and tweet me um and of course watching ktn friday briefing well we now hand things over to the special group pamoja acro dancers together with a beautiful lady who says she wants to meet president uhuru kenyatta again because what 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 Nigependa, <laughs> nigependa, wambia president, uh -huh. afanye kinyaneza fanya, walimu wa gomoke, uh -huh. tuende shule, shule. <laughs> and then, nigependa, kum, nigependa kumit president, uh -huh. nionge na e, uh -huh. personally. <laughs> So there you go, she wants to speak to President Uhuru Kenyatta personally, but she also says that, you know, he should do something so that teachers go back to school and to class. Well, thank you very much for watching KTN Friday Briefing. My name is Betty Kialo. Always a pleasure having your company um, every Friday evening. Well, I now hand things over to the Pamoja Acro dancers, you know, for our last show. Take it over, guys. <laughs> Okay.